Good morning from on board the Norwegian Bliss. This is day seven of our Alaskan cruise. We are off the western edge of Canada in Canadian waters, headed towards Victoria, Canada. We come into port there this evening at eight o'clock. In the meantime, we we're gonna have breakfast and we we're gonna explore the ship some more and have a lot of fun. So why don't you come along with us? And I am adorning my new Alaska May the North Be With You t-shirt that I got yesterday while we were doing our zip line excursion and a couple mimosas to finish breakfast with. You can see the steam coming off of the pool. The pools are heated. No one is braving it right now though because of the cool air temperature. Looks like the water slides are open. When the attendants are up there, that means they are open for the takers, the brave souls who may have no fear of cold air temperature. Remember the water on the slides are actually warm. There is a line for eggs every morning when you get you know, your omelets made, or your, your egg whites. And uh, the key to that is get your coffee before you stand in line to get your omelet. There you can be standing there waiting and while you're drinking your coffee and then just get a refill afterwards. Breakfast for me today was oatmeal with cinnamon, raisins, and some strawberries and a lot of egg whites. Looks tasty, Victoria. What'd you get today? I got two melon. How do you do melon? I got some eggs. I got hash browns. Then I got pancakes and waffles. Pancakes and waffles. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice sweater over there. Where'd you get it? Alaska. <laughs> we haven't been out here yet to Spice H2O, which is the area for the adults only to hang out. So we're going to go explore. See what's happening back here. We've heard there is a bar. Oh, the sun's coming out. Oh, this is where the the water falls down there that a lot of people use when it's a warm cruise. Looks like there's a stage back here. And there's a hot tub in that direction, hot tub in that direction. We are at the very back of the ship here. You can see the trail of the ship that the ship leaves behind. Let's head over here to this bar, grab a drink. Sitting up here in Spice H2O, as far back as you can go on the ship, on deck 17, I believe, Breda, we're on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got uh, another mimosa, and we were gonna originally sit over by the bar, but this, I'll show you in a second, this view, it's much better. Plus, we were catching a little bit of smoke over, there's a smoking area on the, on the far left side over there, near the bar, so was catching some of that which is uh, was not enjoyable so we're gonna move over here much better decision anyways because take a look at this view there is the view from our lounge chairs that we did some furniture rearranging here push them up against the glass as far as we could the Sun has come out very enjoyable one more shot of spice h2o the adult area before we leave we have signed up for a perfect wine and cheese pairing, which begins very shortly at the cellar down on deck seven or eight. So we'll see you there. We have arrived at the cellar for the perfect cheese and wine pairing seminar. There is our vino all lined up and they give us some information on what we're about to experience. We're excited, we're glad we got in. It was uh, $27 a person but if you have the drink package already, you get 20% off. Every time I do come to a wine tasting, I'm always reminded of my favorite wine movie, Sideways. It is, uh, it's a great movie if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, write in the comments below, let me know what you thought about Sideways. It's a great movie. The cheeses have arrived. This looks like some sort of 
Stilton blue cheese on the right. And there's some hard cheese over here and soft in the middle. We'll see what these are officially. Red wines in Scotland. We are done the wine tasting. It was a really enjoyable experience. The guy who led the seminar was extremely knowledgeable. I, I mean, he's spent his lifetime seriously studying wine and cheese. So it was very, uh, very fun for us to hear and very enjoyable. He did a tremendous job. Coming out here to the waterfront, we have very low visibility right now. The uh, air temperature has warmed up and it is hitting the cold water. That's what the captain just came on and said. You can hear them, they're blowing the horn at the front there. We uh, will be arriving in Victoria in a few hours. We are actually gonna have to go back and pack right now. It is very early afternoon. We have to pack though, because tonight we'll be off the ship and we won't have a chance to pack then. So we're gonna pack now, get everything situated in our bags. Because in the morning, as you fellow cruisers know, they get you off the ship pretty early. So now is the time to pack so that we can then enjoy the rest of the day and have some more fun. Here is the outdoor bar here along the waterfront at the Cavern Club. You can go inside to the indoor bar or you can stay out here and grab beverages out here. I've just decided to walk along here to go back to the room. Since the weather has warmed up, the sun is still fighting its way through the mist. It feels warm on my back as I'm walking here. The captain just came on and said, the air temperature right now, oh, you can hear the horn again then. The captain came on and said, the air temperature right now is about 55 degrees where we're sailing through. It feels warmer, I'm in a t-shirt and some light Adidas pants. Tons of sofa sectionals to sit on out here. You can get gelato right here. Hello, this is the bake shop, Dolce Gelato. You can get vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, white chocolate, raspberry, chocolate, stracciatella, caramel, pistachio, and mango sorbet. And it is $2.75 for one scoop and a cone, and two scoops and a cone is $5. Looks tasty. Continuing along the waterfront here. Again, a lot of people are inside, I think just because they think it's colder outside than it really is. Very enjoyable weather out here for me. Here's the outdoor area of Los Lobos. That is the Mexican restaurant on board. Rita and I had a off-camera margarita there the other night. And now we have arrived at the back of the ship. That's just so powerful right there. We took some photos out here the other day. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, check it out. I think we have some photos on from that spot on Instagram. There'll be a lot of editing when I get home. We're gonna have this Alaskan series plus Seattle tomorrow is gonna be a series of eight vlogs. This is the outdoor area for Cagney Steakhouse. We did eat here at Cagney's. The steak was phenomenal. We had the eight ounce filet. If you didn't see that vlog, be sure to check it out. That was uh, day three, I think. Day three, maybe day four. All of these super fun filled days are starting to run together. It's unfortunate that it's coming to a close tomorrow. There you go, there's the horn again, you can hear. They're doing it more often, I believe, because of the low visibility. We're walking on the exterior now of the Tradewinds Tax and Duty Free Shops. Coming up on the Sugarcane Mojito Bar so many places to sit out here. I imagine on warmer weather cruises, these are much more populated. 
They do have these heat lamps outside here. I mean, this is extremely comfortable. There's heat cranking out, there's heat cranking out of here. This is a nice quiet place to come read a book, catch up on some work if you have to work. Here we go, here is the sugarcane mojito bar. You can go in there, we danced there the other night. This is the outdoor area of the sugarcane mojito bar. I imagine, like I said, on a Caribbean day, can you imagine? This place is probably packed. Let's take a peek inside here. And then you're on the inside of the sugarcane mojito bar. They have nightly live entertainment over here. We enjoyed that the other day. The chandelier. Let's go back outside here. Yeah, I guess it's just, I guess it's just a little chilly for some people. <clears throat> Gonna keep proceeding here along the waterfront. We've almost done the entire thing. Coming up on La Cucina, the Italian restaurant here on board. This is the outdoor seating area. I imagine it's much busier at dinner. That is actually where we just had the wine tasting. The wine bar was directly adjacent and they kind of flowed into the Italian restaurant. So since there were so many people for the wine pairing, they had it technically on the La Cucina side. Now we are in here. We enjoyed Michael on the piano the other night. Had a the piano man request this is the brewery on board. A lot of craft beers for your enjoyment. Some comfortable seating over here. People playing card games in the corner. We sat right over there the other night and watched the piano player. These are the beer offerings. Oh, like and subscribe. Thank you, thank you. Here are the beers on tap, right here. Shout out. Shout out, thank you. They do have some TVs here in the back. And that is, that's a good spot to hang out. Glad we came here tonight. That was District Brew House. Coming full circle here on deck eight. The waterfront level. Finishing with Food Republic. This will cost you an additional charge. They do have a sushi bar right here. Hello? Sushi? Yes, sir. Thank you. Looks tasty. That is not, also not included. This looks very popular over here. Lots of people having lunch. They have a bar over here that you can sit at and eat. You can order right here on these flat screens. Nice and bright and sunny back here. I'm not sure Breda realizes there's a sushi bar here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're coming to this this afternoon. Taking a look at some of the sushi offerings here. All of your classics and some specialty rolls. It, uh, it's a little bit more expensive than California sushi, but you know, they're not catching the fish over the side of the ship. They had to bring it with them. And uh, it's not something that's easy to keep fresh. I imagine that has to do with quite high pricing. Spicy Pacific salmon roll, $18. I mean, it does look tasty. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what great it feels like. We can always have sushi when we get back to California, some of the best sushi in the world. Probably the best sushi outside of Japan. I don't know, but we'll see. It's nice that they do have an offering of sushi here on the boat, the ship. All right, down to the room to pack. Er, I mean, up to the room to pack. 12 is higher than eight. The pool deck is popping. There's people in the pool, the heated pool. I have gotten some seafood chowder for lunch today, it's very good, thank you. And now it is time to get a drink. Bar is crowded. 
And it does look like the other bar over there might be open as well today. It hasn't been open since the first day of the cruise. So yeah, that bar under there right now, super busy, long line to get a drink. So I have come over here to the other bar, the waves bar. That was the busy surf bar. No wait over here at the waves bar. So if you're here and the bar is busy, look over, the other one might be open. We are up here on the top deck next to the speedway and we are going to play some mini golf. Lauren had a little tumble on the way up, but she's okay now. She's going to be our official scorekeeper. How many shots is that, Breda? Okay, Breda's going for three. Oh, Breda with a par to open up the scoring. Uh oh. Up here you get a good shot of the racetrack. Looks like there's a uh, malfunction currently. Everyone stopped. There you go, the cards are going. This is a extra cost activity here on the Norwegian Bliss. And I would recommend booking it in advance. It fills up pretty quickly. That's two. <laughs> Stepping to the tee here on the fourth hole on the Norwegian Bliss, Lauren Vivian Case. Oh, she's got a good speed going in here. Oh, she's got her new Converse golf sneakers on. It's a little bit of an awkward, you're aiming, you're aiming in the right, it's way to the right. There you go, T turn your club out a little bit. There you go, like that. Oh! Braid right on the final hole. Oh, that was not even the good Oh, right off the rock. Lauren, let's go over those final scores for the mini golf. Okay. So, Dad, first place, he got 12. 12? Then... Oh, how many holes were there? Five, right? Yeah. Okay. And then. Not um, bad, not bad. And then Mom got 16 last place out of three. And then I got 14 second place. So uh, is, a, is a low score win? Yeah. Okay, so, oh, I won then. Okay. Done with mini golf. Just walking through the ship here on our way to take Lauren back to the Entourage Teen Lounge. Walking into Le Bistro, which is the French restaurant here on board the Norwegian Bliss. They are in between meals here setting up for a wonderful dinner experience for the guests on board who have chosen to come dine here this evening. There is a bar back there. I've heard a lot of people say that this is their favorite restaurant on the ship. Looks very upscale. Maybe next time we're on board the Bliss, we will have a chance to experience La Bistro. This ship is actually being repositioned to the Los Angeles area starting in the fall winter. It will be doing the seven day trip to Cabo San Lucas. So it will be actually very easy for us to get to. And maybe we'll be back on board the Bliss heading to Mexico in a few months. Down here on deck five, we are picking the kids up. Both the Teen Lounge and the Kids Club are on deck five. Taking a quick look inside the video arcade. See what they have going on here. See what games they have. They got some. Got a crane game over there. Crane game here. We got air hockey. We got the Star Wars Battle Pod over here. I played that, that's pretty fun. It's a little difficult. Oh, they got Nintendo cruising. I do like my racing games. Oh, we got, we got these uh, coin games where it pushes the coins over the edge. Hopefully Lauren hasn't used her card this week and run up a big bill for us. Got some ski ball over here. We got Halo. We got what equates to Papa Shot, which we have in our garage back home. We got the Jurassic Park 
shooter game over here. This is probably my favorite game that would be in here. We got some motorcycle racing games. Guitar here over there, that's a classic. And that wraps it up for the arcade. This is a prototypical pickup here at the Splash Academy, which is the kids club here on board. When the club closes, whatever time they may be today, it is two to 4 p.m. Pickup time is always busy, so plan accordingly. Victoria has hidden our last duck and we are going back up to play a round of mini golf just with Victoria. Each card says this cruise is being vlogged by NK and SoCal. Comment down below if you found one of our ducks. Victoria on hole two. Hey, that's too hard, Mama. That's too hard. Okay, you got a you got a mulligan. It's not 400 yards away. Yeah. That's looking good. Oh. We have wrapped up a fun afternoon on the pool deck. It was the vibe out there was really fun today. The sun came out. It was probably only like 60 degrees, but after having been in Alaska, everyone was acting like it was 90 and, and you're in the Caribbean. There's a ton of people in the pool, a lot of people on the water slides. We had fun just hanging out in the loungers, having a few drinks, listening to the band first that played Siglo, that's what they're called. And then the DJ, DJ Keith was also uh, playing music afterwards. It was a lot of fun. It was nice to just hang out and like not do anything on the pool deck for a little bit after having been on so many excursions over the last few days. And we are now here in Savor Restaurant for dinner. It's pretty early. It's still only like 525. But remember tonight around 8 p.m. we're going to arrive in Victoria. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, Canada. And so we're trying to have an early dinner so that we can be prepared to get off the ship in time. Taking a look at the menu here tonight. Actually, first of all, take a look at my view. We are front row window. Just beautiful. All right. Second most beautiful thing I've seen tonight other than the ocean. Well, I should say third. Breda was the second. Breda was the first, ocean was the second. The third would be the seared Atlantic scallops. I love scallops. I might just have five orders of scallops for my dinner. I don't know. I don't even look at the rest. It's the love first. I do love my scallops. Thank you, Victoria. Um, I don't even. I don't even know. I'm just like head over heels right now for my scallops. I don't even know. I guess we're just gonna look at the rest. Uh, bruschetta is here every night. Bruschetta is here. It's tasty. We had the first few nights. You know what also looks really good is the Stilton cheese soup. That's the Stilton is a blue cheese. A Stilton blue cheese soup with apple and red onion. That sounds sensational. You know what also looks good? <laughs> Victoria also looks good. <laughs> and the classic entrees always here, folks. The classic entrees, if you have something in mind that you've been enjoying all week off of the classic entree menu, they will be here the whole time. yippee ki -yay. yippee ki -yay, says Victoria. Today's features entrees, mm -hmm. broiled rainbow trout, grilled lemon pepper shrimp, which Victoria has her eyes on, Parmesan crusted turkey escalope, bratwurst, oh, I wonder if that comes on a bun, carved whole roasted beef sirloin, and spinach and ricotta stuffed pepper. The scallops and the Stilton cheese soup have arrived. Victoria is over here playing, what game is that? Puzzle Dumb. Puzzle Dumb. She hasn't had a device all week and she's just gotten some Puzzle Dumb in her life. She's enjoying it. She's been interacting with actual people this week. These scallops are really tasty. They're a little bit spicy. I've never had or even heard of a Stilton blue cheese soup, but it was very, very tasty. If I ever saw this again on a Norwegian cruise menu, I would definitely get it. My entree of scalloped turkey with broccoli and mashed potatoes has arrived. There's a little bit of marinara there on the side. It looks very well browned. 
And also over here, Victoria has gotten the lemon grilled pepper shrimp. It comes with some zucchini. And I think that's a roasted lemon there. Initial impressions mm. from the it's, shrimp lover? It's warm. Okay. Yeah. You gotta rip off the tail though. Oh, you're being a savage? Okay. What do you think? It's good. It's really good. Okay, good. It passes the Victoria test. Lauren's got the big ziti over there. She's already smeared around all the ricotta cheese. It didn't quite look like that about 30 seconds ago. Finishing up our final dinner here aboard the Norwegian Bliss, the dessert menu tonight, chocolate fudge cake, warm chocolate lava cake, which Breda, Victoria, and myself have all decided to go with the old faithful lava cake. There's also apple cobbler, Nutella creme brulee, which Lauren has decided upon this evening. There is pear, Charlotte, and a port wine reduction. Seasonal fruit plate is always there, and the ice cream and sherbet is always there. The no sugar added daily selection is pound cake and vanilla pudding. As we are pulling into Canadian waters here, we have been reminded by our server that there is only one bar open on each deck here on board the Bliss. That is a Canadian law. One bar is only allowed to be open on each deck of the ship. So every drink order is taking a lot longer to get right now. And also, while you're in port in Canada at Victoria, the casino is closed. The traditional, the most go-to dessert on a cruise vacation has arrived. The chocolate lava cake. Let's break into this lava cake. Oh, lots of lava in there tonight. Oh, best lava cake of the trip. It's like a chocolate volcano. Victoria, as we head into Victoria, on your final night of your first ever Norwegian cruise, how is the chocolate lava cake? It's the best one of the trip. It's the best one of the trip. Yeah, because it oozed out. It oozed out. Uh -huh. There's times of charm because the first one, it was. There, there was, was no lava. There was no lava. The second one. A little bit of lava. It was a little bit of lava. Third one. Delicious. Yeah. Mucho lava. We are done dinner, and the three girls have gone back to the room to get a head start on going off the ship soon in Victoria, Canada. I have gotten a coffee with some Baileys and I am on the top deck watching the beginnings of the Canadian sunset. We'll be coming into port shortly in maybe another hour. It's a great spot for an after dinner hangout. The wind has picked up so I put a sweater on. It's always a good idea to carry a sweater with you on an Alaskan cruise even if you don't always need it. You know, when you're out here on the ocean, any cruise really, anytime you're out on the ocean, the weather can change pretty drastically, pretty suddenly. So it's good to always have a sweater with you. And uh, I just put mine on, just finishing this coffee up and I'm gonna head back and meet up with the girls in the room to get ready to go ashore. One thing I wanted to add regarding the casino is that they do have the smoking room sectioned off from the rest of the casino. They have separate tables and gaming machines in there for those that want to smoke. But the rest of the main casino, this area, the Skyland Bar, these machines, and all the tables that way that I've played at, they're all smoke free. We are in Canada. Who's excited? Woo! It's been a hot minute since we've been to Canada. Lauren, what do you think? Do you, do you feel, do you feel like you're at home? Half your bloodline is Canadian. No, you're just tired. I think everyone's a little bit tired. It's the end of the cruise. Are you excited to be in Victoria? Miss Victoria? There's our ship, the Norwegian Bliss back there. The Holland America Euro Dam. And the Royal Princess, the Euro Dam on the left, the Royal Princess on the right. 
were both with us in port in Ketchikan. History. Wow, this is a first. Okay, and Victoria, how about you? Art. Art, cool. Right on. Yeah, history is so awesome, and I think it has a bad reputation, <laughs> but it's a lot more exciting than, than people think it is. Yeah, not English. Yeah. What, uh, what sort of history are you learning about that fascinates flag. you? Canadian flag. Yes, the Canadian flag. <laughs> Kind of thing in cowboy. So that's why we have James Bay. Because the wealthy British who could afford to do so migrated into Jesus. Who that little man is on top there? How about you, Lauren? History? George Vancouver. George, there you go. There you go. I you just guessed because I'm a good listener. Victoria was about to say it, I can tell. Yeah. She was about yeah. to say it. Yeah. That's, that's Mr. George Vancouver. This is like a 150, 125 year old Sequoia here. So uh, there was, that was a gift from the U.S. Is that Queen Victoria? That's Queen Victoria. Oh! There you are. There you are, Victoria. You're going to get a picture. Queen Victoria with Queen Victoria. So funny thing about this building, it has 33 copper domes, 333 outward facing windows, and 3,333 steps. So if you were to look at this from uh, Google Maps, bird's eye view, you'll actually see the all-seeing eye you see on your dollar, one dollar bill. Oh, really? Oh, that's like from National Treasure. Yeah, exactly. That's because the man was a Freemason who uh, built this. Oh, wow. His name was Sir Francis Rattenberry. Oh, wow. And he went on to build the Empress right after this. Over here. Yeah, right here. So these are two of the gems of Victoria. And uh, they, they both have a lot of history behind them. This was built in 1910, 1898, so both well over Do you hear the pipes? Yeah, the bagpipes over there. Victoria has a strong Scottish culture. Uh, we were just there last year. You were in Scotland, were you? Yeah, my yeah. sister and my mom live in Scotland. Oh, cool. We are, we are on a pedicab, AKA coach on wheels here with Mr. Jams. And uh, he is taking us for a tour around Greater Victoria. We may find a Tim Hortons that is uh, on the uh, list of things to do this evening. But otherwise, we are enjoying the tour. Thank you, Jams. Of course. Much love. Nathan's the bomb. His family is amazing. They're very kind and respectful. And, and Jams just subscribed to NK and SoCal. <laughs> NK and SoCal represent. Jams has left us here at the Empress Hotel, except we are first gonna go up that way to Fort Street, turn right, three blocks to Tim Hortons, and then the plan is we may come back here with our Timbits and grab a drink here at the Empress. There's this tremendous grass and floral sculpture here. It's a Mama Orca, Baby Orca. And Queen Victoria. And Queen Victoria. <laughs> we are headed up Government Street on our way to Fort Street. We are also trying to find a gift shop around here. We want to get Queen Victoria, a clothing item that says Victoria on it. So we have two goals in mind, Tim Hortons and Victoria clothing item. We're gonna go check out Beaver Tails over here, also serving poutine. But these guys, these Canadian rookies that are with me, they don't know what a beaver tail is. We have to at least see and show them what a beaver tail is. Right there, those are beaver tails. $8.50, around 7 to 8.50 for a beaver tail. Victoria. Victoria, get in there. No, don't walk in. <laughs> we are in Cool as a Moose, this gift shop here in Victoria on Government Street to find Victoria, her Victoria clothing. And she has picked this hoodie. What color is this, Victoria? Sage, Sage green. green. Says Victoria right here. It also says Victoria on the back. 
Hold it up. Let's see what it looks like. Look what I found. I found my bracelet. All right. Have. That's her. That's her choice right here. Oh, yeah. We can wear it while we're in Victoria. Oh, yeah. With Victoria. After having gotten Victoria her outerwear, we have arrived at our second destination of Tim Hortons. Notice in Canada, they make crosswalks specifically to access donuts wow. at Tim Hortons. Wow. We have ordered a selection of donuts here at Tim Hortons and a 20 pack of mixed Timbits along with some coffee of course. The kids are even being spoiled with getting some decaf coffee this evening. Lauren's first impression of a Canadian maple donut from Tim Hortons. It's really good. You gotta try it with your coffee. Take a bite. The decaf. The decaf. It's got the cream filling, the maple topping. What do you think, Lauren? It's a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10, Lauren's. <laughs> now that we are overstuffed with donuts from Tim Hortons, we have arrived at the Empress Hotel. It is a Fairmont hotel. Feeling very regal as we walk in here. Are you feeling regal? This is very fancy. It's probably a lot. We are kind of exploring around the Empress. We are looking possibly for the bar area. We have a gift shop back there. Yeah. Here is the bar area at the Empress Hotel. A little bit of a swanky vibe in here. And that was the express tour of the Empress hotel here in Victoria. We're gonna head over in that direction towards Small World, I mean Parliament. We are walking back to the cruise ships, passing by Huntington Manor, the Pendry Inn and Tea House. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Could I have a cup of tea? Right now. <laughs> ha ha. Afternoon tea is available. We were told 15 minute walk back to the cruise ship. You gotta burn off those donuts. Coming back into port from Victoria, we have the Royal Princess on the far right, the Eurodam on, in the middle, and then our ship. There's a third one there in the distance. And that will wrap up our Alaskan cruise. It is day of disembarkation. So thanks for coming along for this series of Alaskan videos. We have one more day on this trip. It will be a day in Seattle. But that wraps it up for the actual cruise videos. Thanks for coming along.